Also, uh, total mammal captures and total captures of the white-footed mouse were statistically compared to environmental variables, including canopy cover, tree density, percent cover, total basal area, soil moisture, coarse woody debris, leaf litter. That's just some of the ones we looked at. Uh, relationships were analyzed using Pearson's correlation and linear regression and to reveal the most determinative land environmental variable. Uh, for the DNA analysis, DNA was extracted from tissue samples using uh, the QIA AMP DNA mini kit and following the listed protocols in the book for the extraction of tissues. Uh, Real-time PCR using species-specific primers for B. lone star I was used to screen samples for the presence of the bacteria. Okay, we had a total of 117 mammals captured, representing five genera and five species. Uh, in the unburned control, there was only three species, three individuals captured, uh, which is only 3% of the total captures. Uh, and it was one species, it was Paramiscus. Uh, in the five years since burn treatment, there was 29 individuals, or 25% of the total captures. Uh, in the two year treatment, I had 25 individuals, or 21% of the total captures. And in the one month, I had 60 individuals, or 51% of the total captures. So as you can see, the one month was just slap loaded with animals compared to the other three. So it's kind of just going back through that. The unburned control, the dominant species was Paramiscus leucopus. Uh, in the five year, the most common was also the white foot. Two years, same thing. One month, same thing. Paramiscus is just really common. Um, the one month, the notable there would be the Sigma Don Hispidus, which is the Hispid cotton rat. That's another notable capture. I'll explain that in a little bit. It was the second most common species captured on the one month. Um, so here we have the, just the different indexes of diversity, evenness, species richness. Uh, species diversity and richness was greater in plots that were burned one month and two years ago and than those that were burned 15 and 5. I mean, you see the five, I mean, 15 had a species diversity of 0, richness of 1. Um, the 5 year had 2 species, 2 year had 4, 1 month had 5. Uh, when looking at the Man Whitney versus total animal capture, statistical difference uh, in comparison of the 15 year since burn treatment to all other treatments. And when looking at just the white footed mouse captures, there was statistical difference in comparison of 15 years since burn treatment to all other treatments. <clears throat> Uh, when we did the diversity t-test, there was significant difference between the one-month treatment and the two-year treatment, between the one-month and the five-year treatments, <coughs> between the one-month and the unburned control, uh, between the two-year treatment and the unburned control, and between the five-year treatment and the unburned control. Uh, we also did Pearson's for correlation and regression. Uh, we did that. Small mammal communities showed negative correlations when comparing captures to tree density. Uh, small mammals showed a positive correlation to soil moisture and coarse woody debris. Uh, Paramiscus leucopus showed positive correlation when comparing captures to percentage of fern cover, <coughs> coarse woody debris, and soil moisture. Uh, Paramiscus leucopus also showed negative correlation when comparing captures to tree density. So as you can see, they're kind of similar between just the total small mammal and the just paramiscus. Um, as far as tick and tissue analysis, no ticks were found. Um, and 39 mammal, sample, 39 mammal tissue samples were run and no positives for Borrelia lone star. So, Paramiscus numbers were much higher on the recently burned sites than on the unburned control sites. Uh, this is shown. Paramiscus usually are the earliest invaders of treated stands due to increased ground vegetation post-burn. 
Uh, also, higher paramiscus species populations on burn sites have been attributed to better visibility, abundance of seed, a food source, you know, explained all that earlier. Uh, in sites that were not recently burned, uh, there was a low number of animal captures. Uh, small mammal populations have been shown to be lower and older, more open forested areas, and have little boats kept vegetation close to the ground. Um, we have the hispid cotton rat, you know, I told you it was the, most, the second most common species captured on the one month treatment. And it was rarely captured again on any of the other treatments. This has been shown that it quickly invades regenerating stands of seedlings and dense low vegetation. As the stands develop and canopies shade out the understory vegetation, cotton rat numbers dwindle to, in response to the changing habitat suitability. Um, just a new restatement, the significant difference between the one month post-burn treatment and all of the treatments points to the positive effect of burning on diversity. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of comes a new point of just stating it over and over and over. It changes the vegetation, which increases the herbaceous, which increases your small mammals, which causes more diverse, you know, more food, etc. It's becoming mute. Um, the significant difference between the unburned control and all other sites for the lack of burning has a negative impact on diversity. You have a mature forest, you have very little ground vegetation. Like on all of my sites that were 15 plus years, there was very, very little ground vegetation. Uh, it's real open floor, just mainly leaf cover. That's just about it. Um, it's been shown that that supports a relatively low density of small mammals. Uh, just on a side note, decreases in mammal diversities would be, diversity would be expected between the five-year post-burn sites and both the one-month post-burn and the two-year post-burn sites. Uh, this was not observed in this study. Uh, in my opinion, I would say it's likely due to the high amount of captures on Site 10 from the five-year treatment. Uh, site 10 was along a creek, had tons of uh, giant cane. Uh, it formed a real dense thicket in the, along the along the creek area and just about all of my mammal captures on that site occurred in that thicket. I had three traps and I caught them in those three traps every time I went out there. Um, thinking maybe that it provided real good cover for them possibly was my thoughts because um, I mean the, <clears throat> the other part of the site was real open not much ground cover and also it could be that only one individual was captured on site four of the two-year treatment site. Uh, site 4 had a very open canopy. It, uh, there was very many tall trees. It was mostly open to the real bright sun, you know, open to the air. And it, I figured it could have led to an increased predation risk on the small mammals, therefore decreasing their population. You know, they're just not going to be there. And on a side note, I don't know if this affected it or not, but the site was really covered in fire ants. And any time I put a trap out, <coughs> fire ants got in there and eat anything I put in there. They would build nests in my in my traps, so I think that could be another reason I didn't get much on site four. The animals may have been there, but they're not going to go in a trap full of fire ants. I'm pretty sure. If they did, they're not too bright. Um, 